Welcome back to the interview. I'm Gene Morano. Our guest is best-selling author Sharon McCrum from right here in Roanoke County. I wanted to go back a few years, and, and you got off on a NASCAR tangent for a while, and you, mm -hmm. and you put out two NASCAR-themed, uh, uh, racing-themed novels, including St. Dale, which was an, really an homage to uh, Dale Earnhardt Sr. Talk about that process, because you were saying, for a Southern gal, you really didn't know much about NASCAR at all. I didn't. Not at all when I started. I started with the Canterbury Tales because I had studied that at Virginia Tech and thought what a universal story it was and that all you would have to do to modernize it would be to change the saint. So finally we got us a southern saint when Dale Earnhardt died and I thought you could do the Canterbury pilgrimage, just put people on a Greyhound bus and send them to Daytona mm -hmm. from say Bristol. Where he died, Dale Earnhardt. Yeah, and so eight states last count are teaching that as a supplementary text to Chaucer because it's a great way to reach young people to get them to understand mm -hmm. the whole canonization thing. Mm -hmm. and kind of a Murray band of travelers on a pilgrimage. Right? It is, it is. And they understand the whole racing background to it. And that book won a Library of Virginia award, it won Best Appalachian Novel, got me invited to the White House and was featured in the National Festival of the Book. Hmm. So it's one of the most successful books that I've ever done. And you befriended Ward, Ward Burton, uh, the NASCAR driver who really gave you some support. Yes, and Junior Johnson and the Wood Brothers and the Earnhardt family found the book and said that of all the books written about Dale Earnhardt, that was the one that got it right. Hmm. So I was very happy that they liked what I did. Mm -hmm. How long do you research a book Sharon, but typically before you start writing? I mean, do you immerse yourself for a while? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Two or three years at least. And in the case of, of the NASCAR book, I started thinking that Kurt Busch was the governor of Florida. So I had an <laughs> enormous amount of research to do just from the ground up. Right. Huh. Um, I wanted to go back. Uh, you, you have an interesting background. Your great-grandfathers were circuit preachers in North Carolina's uh, Smoky Mountains a, a century ago. And uh, you know, riding horseback to different communities to, to, to preach every week. And uh, is that some of where your storytelling comes yes, from, you think, I your think background? Yes, I think so, yes. That the business of, of um, using metaphor and, and being articulate. It's mm. a storytelling culture. And my father was a college professor. Mm. So I have, he used to, when I was little, he would tell me bedtime stories and I got the Iliad as if Andy Griffith were telling it mm -hmm. in a folksy kind of, once there was a king named Prime who had a boy named Paris. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting uh, the way the t topography is set up here where you talk about you've got like where you're from, you had flatland North Carolinians, right. mountain people, and they may be 100 miles apart, but their stories would be culture. different. Right. Well, and because of the settlement patterns, the English and the French settled the flatlands, but the Scots and the Irish and the Welsh settled the highlands, all mm -hmm. the people who didn't work and play well with others. Mm -hmm. So if you want to understand that split between the mountains and the flatlands, the movie to rent is Braveheart. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to go back to uh, The Devil Amongst the Lawyers, and there's a little bit of the supernatural in the book, too, involving Nora yes. Bonesteel, 12-year-old girl. Is that a device you've used in the past? Yes, magic realism is something that you find prevalent in Celtic cultures, and it did, I think, come over with those Scots and Irish and Welshmen who settled the mountains. We have almost everybody I know whose family has been for generations in the mountains has a ghost story, a family ghost story. Mm -hmm. You know, and a, a mutual friend of ours, and uh, I think a distant relative of yours, Dan Smith, always likes to say that very few people make their living as a writer. And talk about your journey. When you talk to college kids about writing, yes. do you talk to them about how hard it is to make it as a writer or a full-time writer? Most of the time I stay away from the business side of it. I will talk about what makes good stories and, and how to create fiction. Um, I think that there, there's probably a difference between the business of writing and the craft of writing. Mm -hmm. But yes, last I heard there were only 200 people in America that made a living writing novels. Hmm. And so you're one of the lucky yes. few. Yeah. And you were saying when this novel came out there were celebrations in the town of Wise and also at the Barta Theater. Yes, it was, it was wonderful because this was set in Wise. They, um, they had me come and do the premiere there and set up a tent on the courthouse lawn of the courthouse where, which is where the book is set. And I gave a talk and we had music and one of the cousins of the actual defendant 
Jackie Gilliam, who's now the mayor of Pound, came mm -hmm. and signed books with me mm -hmm. for that whole evening. So those will be a treasure. She's in her 80s. Mm -hmm. And then I went the next night to the Barter Theater in Abingdon because it be the book begins in Abingdon. And they um, had their musicians do wonderful renditions of some of the songs from the 30s in the book, Carter Family Songs. Mm -hmm. And um, then we, I did readings and we had photographs of, mm -hmm. of the actual setting. So people don't mind the spotlight being shown on their part of the country? No, the no, I think they realized that I was on their side. Mm -hmm. We've got about a minute left. I wanted to ask you, just wrapping up about this book, um, what do you want readers to come away thinking, uh, either about Irma Morton on trial for murder, or, or about their views of the rural South? What do you want readers to come away with? I think that what I want readers to know is that just because you read something in the newspaper doesn't mean that it's true, that you should always take any piece of reporting and ask yourself what the agenda is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that's a message you kind of re repeat over and over again in the book. It seems like it's kind of a, a sticking point with you. Or yeah. Well, I was, I was in London when Henry Lee Lucas was arrested, the serial killer, and my friend was reading the article from the London paper and said, oh, he comes from this savage place where they have no electricity and no running water and no one can read. And I said, oh my God, where's he from? And they said, Blacksburg, Virginia. Oh. Right, of course, Blacksburg's been the scene of some attention that hasn't wanted to be the scene of in the past, but recently, but. But anyway. that's not the Blacksburg, I know. Right, right. We'll have to leave it there. Sharon McCrum, thank you very much for joining us today on The View. This is The Interview. I'm Gene Morano. We'll be right back.